Good evening and welcome to the uh, City Council of San Bruno special meeting study session agenda on the budget. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Salazar. Here. Council Member Medina. Here. Mayor Ruane. Here. Council Member Ibera. Here. Vice Mayor O'Connell. Here. Uh, item number two, public comment. Any members of the public wish to address the uh, council on items not on this agenda? All right, seeing none, we'll go right into the uh, conduct study session uh, to review the recommended 2013-14 general fund, special revenue funds, and enterprise funds budget. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the City Council. We have uh, what I hope will be an informative and um, relatively concise presentation for you tonight that is intended simply to provide you with an overview of uh, the work program and the financial information that is contained in this budget. Uh, we recognize that you have had a very short period, you've had no time to review the budget prior to this study session. And so, um, as I indicated to you when we set this up, that um, we will be perhaps making use of the budget document to uh, point and show you certain things that we're talking about. But tonight is, uh, we recognize, is not an opportunity for you to have an informed discussion about the content of this budget. Um, that, we hope, will occur next week at one or more study sessions that we have previously scheduled. So uh, the presentation tonight, uh, although we have a number of people in the audience from the departments, will not cover detailed information about the departmental budget present, uh, presentations uh, in, the, in the printed document. And again, uh, we're scheduling that information for your consideration next week. What we are talking to tonight about is a relatively higher level overview of the um, financial picture, uh, the financial situation of the city in which this budget has been developed. And we have some generally, um, what we think is relatively positive news on that front. And again, about the, uh, some of the bigger picture issues, both impacting and um, uh, shaping the work program for the coming year. And I just want to make sure that I don't discourage any discussion that you would like to have tonight. Certainly, as always, we are very interested in hearing from the City Council. So um, please feel free to stop us or to let us know at any point if you, if you would like to entertain a discussion or if you have any questions. So with that, um, uh, I'm going to get started and then uh, the presentation tonight will be uh, between myself and our finance director, Kim Duran. The budget um, overall, uh, and this is, this is a very, very positive comment and I hope that you will uh, join me in, a, in a, a great deal of um, appreciation for a situation that we are now experiencing where for the first time in a very long time, um, we are presenting to you a balanced budget, not a, we always present you with a balanced budget, a budget that has been balanced without the need for reductions in staff programs or services, and which does not rely on any recommended use of one-time funds for uh, balancing this budget. It is largely due to uh, a, a beginning improvement in our revenue situation, as, as Kim will give you a little bit more detail about. And although we are not uh, at a point where we would be recommending to you that it is time for uh, massive consideration of new programs or services or expansion of existing services, and we do find this to be a very positive result. This budget um, still reflects the City Council's conservative revenue estimating policy and priority, and it continues to reflect the prior year's cost containment strategies. And what I mean by that, and as Kim will detail further, uh, virtually all of the prior year reductions in programs, services, and staff continue and are uh, forming the base budget. So uh, we recognize that 
the road we've traveled over the past many years that has resulted in a number of changes to what we would call our base services um, has, has changed the level at which we operate and that is our new base. So we don't, uh, we don't make uh, expansions or changes without bringing those back for specific deliberation by the city council. The budget continues um, and largely because of the many prior year reductions there continue to be, uh, it, it, there continues to be, shall we say, a greater demand for uh, resources than we have resources to provide to what we might all consider to be important and even necessary uh, services and programs. Um, where we've had the opportunity to make some thoughtful evaluation of opportunities to direct resources to some either unmet needs or undermet needs. We have, we have thoughtfully incorporated those into this budget as proposed supplemental or service enhancement changes. And we'll, we'll go through those with you tonight. Um, and then lastly, in terms of the, uh, the budget overview, before I, before I turn the presentation over to Kim, <coughs> I wanted to acknowledge and to briefly discuss with the council, and again from a fairly high level perspective, the incorporation or recognition of the numbers of items that the city council discussed in a, a previous budget workshop that we held on March 26th. At that time, staff was presenting to you a number of items that we were, uh, as we were at a fairly early stage uh, in developing the budget, numbers of uh, sort of bigger picture issues had emerged as items that we wanted to make sure you were aware of that would be coming forward as part of the budget presentation, both the operating and the capital budget presentations. And that workshop provided an opportunity for the City Council to uh, comment on a number of issues of interest and concern. The uh, sheet that you have in front of you is a summary uh, based on our notes from that meeting that identifies, in, in some cases in a very shorthand kind of way, the um, several comments that were made by uh, members of the City Council. We've attempted to organize them in a manner that uh, gives us a little bit of structure to how and, and, and in what uh, in manner these items would be brought back forward. Um, in general, there are a number of these items that fall generally within the sort of the construct of the operating budget. Um, some of them are incorporated and we'll, we'll spend a little bit more time with you as, uh, over the course of the next few evenings as we're going through the operating budget presentation. Um, some of these items have already been incorporated either as a, um, uh, uh, a work program item in a, in a base budget expenditure line item or as a new uh, supplemental enhancement item. Um, and then there are a number of items which we uh, will be bringing forward to you in this next category under the capital budget, the capital improvement program budget, uh, that we anticipate incorporating and or discussing further with the City Council at that time. Uh, the capital improvement program budget is currently under development and we anticipate bringing that forward to you next month uh, for your separate detailed consideration. There were a few items that uh, we would like to bring back to the City Council for a more um, thorough discussion to make sure that, that, that we understand exactly how the City Council would like to proceed and, and to uh, have a, a little bit more back and forth. And then lastly, there was sort of a, a subset of these items that really represent areas where the City Council asked for a compilation of uh, information. And these items are in progress, but not yet. Uh, they, they don't, they're, they're not really precisely information that we would ordinarily be including in the budget, but we wanted to make sure that we were acknowledging and recognizing that the City Council had asked 
for certain information to be compiled and we will be providing that to you. The, oh, and we're certainly interested as part of um, uh, your conversation tonight and, and going forward over these next budget study sessions, certainly interested in getting any um, further refinement and clarification of the City Council's interests in, in those items. When did you want those comments? Uh, anytime you would like to provide them. If you if you have some comments right now, we're, we're happy to receive no, no, them. I mean, I'll, I'll wait to be. Okay. Um, it, so let me let me be let me just be a little bit more clear. Our intent is uh, particularly for those items that are listed under the operating budget and or the um, uh, capital budget to that's sort of our thinking about w under what umbrella would those conversations be most uh, be most useful. So, for example, under the operating budget. Um, what I will anticipate is that there are a number of these items that we'll be discussing with you as we move through some of the departmental presentations. Uh, for example, we have a supplemental proposal for a allocation of funds to a economic development downtown um, the planning uh, resource that would assist us in developing um, some means of, of attracting new businesses to the downtown and and working specifically to to revitalize that special corridor of our city so we have some of those types of items to discuss with you um, some of these other items um, specifically uh, where I've, where I've uh, tried to capture them under the council's interest for a strategic planning session we'd like to um, propose that to you, um, work towards getting that scheduled, and I would envision numbers of these issues either coming up as part of your discussion, say, of code enforcement as we go through the departmental budgets, or to be fleshed out a little bit um, as part of a strategic planning discussion. Again, your choice. With this level of information, um, some of these things I think actually need a little bit more discussion. What exactly do you mean by improved code enforcement? You'll hear from us, what are we talking about in terms of the work program that we've envisioned for you as part of the operating budget? You may have some additional or different guidance to provide to us, and so that's that's how I envision that moving forward. Is that, is that helpful? Yeah, I can just, there's only one thing that Okay. I, I, and I don't know whether it would be under the capital improvement or not. And that's uh, when I brought up before as far as reviewing safety, as far as the equipment. I'm not talking more or less about the apparatus, but that we, since we have some monies in the equipment reserve, and rather than allocating them back to the general fund, that we look at every department across the board. And if there were items that are outdated or need to be reviewed or to bring up to par, that those be brought forward as well. I know it might be bigger in some areas than others, but at least we can see about this budget and maybe then looking uh, further if it has to be a capital improvement. Thank you. Okay, so that, that may be a good example of um, how your, your thoughts didn't exactly fall into the capital budget. Let me just tell you, um, so thank you for that clarification. The, the departments are generally tasked each year, budget limitations or not, with looking at the essential equipment that is necessary for their operations. So um, it, is our, it is generally our practice to <coughs> evaluate and where important and um, where when resources are limited, uh, where absolutely critical to bring forward budget proposals to replace equipment. Um, I think that we can, we can deal with some of those issues as we move through the departmental presentations and perhaps departments can be a little bit more clear about what they've looked at, where, where they think um, uh, equipment needs may, be, may need to be considered a little bit further. And, and certainly we're happy to um, take any further guidance from the City Council. Um, I would move on unless the Council would like to... Is there any additional comments? Well, oh, oh, oh. Well, later. Wow. <laughs> On both ends. <laughs> well, you know, had to have a little drama. <laughs> oh my God. I know. Sorry. Um, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> At least it wasn't something. Go ahead, Tom. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I, uh, considering our conversation last last week, I guess it was with Caltrans and the fountain proposed fountain at the station and the discussions about who is going to own the maintenance of it right. would that be appropriate to look at at this at the operating budget as a as a possible future operating budget item or absolutely okay so that's and and, and actually that's a, a very good uh, <laughs> a good catch um, that that is a, a great example of something that has come up very recently budget was already prepared at least in, in large measure. We don't still have a really good idea about what the cost is. I mean, we could plug in a number, um, but we actually haven't done that. And so that is something that we will need to consider and that um, that item is coming <coughs> forward, or at least the, the Posey Park discussion item is coming back to you on Tuesday night as part of the regular council meeting. Okay. So at that time, it would be a, a great opportunity to say, and. You know, we recognize that uh, there may be a need to amend the resources that are available in the budget, d depending on, on what it is that we decide to do about Fuzzy Park. Okay. Great. And, Thank and, you. And, and if I could just tag mm -hmm. on that. I think it's important. We, 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 dealt with it when we, we dealt with it when we were dealing with the uh, developing the, the median strips. And we brought staff in to get their input yep. as to, you know, how they're going to deal with you know the new median strips and maintenance and things and I think it's important to include staff in some of these uh, sessions these study sessions or discussions because they're the ones that ultimately are going to be dealing with it I can tell you they're very aware and very um, uh, very much interested in uh, new service demands uh, because in fact they are the experts they know exactly now we do we're not we don't know a lot about maintaining fountains and big rivers but uh, uh, such as a proposed for Posey Park, but we are working on that and the park staff in particular has been tasked with um, developing not only an understanding of what's proposed, but to give us their best estimate or judgment about what it actually is going to be required in order to maintain that, just as we um, are also considering with respect to the newly renovated, increasingly uh, increasing number of newly renovated medians. It's, a, it's an issue, and I, but, I know the staff is here tonight. They'll be prepared to discuss that with you. But, I, I mean, I, even even what Rico was talking about as far as equipment and things, I mean, I'd like to think that our staff knows what they need mm -hmm. and what's what's new and improved, what's the latest state-of-the-art stuff. But I think we need to really be sure that they know what they're looking and that we are getting the best and that they know what they're getting. Uh, there are a few isolated cases where we think that we've made the wrong decisions on certain things. You know, so I think we need to be sure because we're talk, talking about a lot of money for certain types of equipment, certain repairs on facilities and things that uh, I think we should really know, maybe not the council, but know that uh, the process is, is going in the right direction and making those decisions. You, you want to know that the people who have frontline understanding and, and uh, uh, are impacted by the operation of the equipment, that they use the equipment, that they've been uh, involved in selecting and guiding the uh, decision making regarding those choices. And we're just not sold a bill of goods for yep. some guy that came. Yeah. They called it. And through the chair, uh, to recap what, uh, I'd add on to Ken. I think it is most critical because we might sit up here and, and think that we've been adequately funding something. <clears throat> and all of a sudden, I want to ensure and make sure as being a former city employee who was the one that was on the front lines, at, at least in my department, not public safety, but that we're being heard, they're being heard, and that if, they, if there's a need or something is outdated or something is not safe, that we're aware of that. And to come to this level and that we get their feedback, their input, they should never be afraid to bring forward the needs that provide the best service and protection for them and the residents. And so that is one thing I want to make sure this budget cycle. Thank you. I will move on to the next uh, topic. And again, we're always more water? interested. No, thank you. <laughs> um, 
as we do every year, we try and um, uh, give the council a little bit of a report about the year that's just been closed. Um, we give you a quarterly financial report, and the budget is an opportunity, the budget presentation each year in June is an opportunity to give you the, finan the fourth quarter financial report. Um, we do that, and Kim will be um, summarizing some of the financial details tonight, both as it relates to the just ended or about to almost about to be ended fiscal year um, where we project our ending position as of June 30th but also what is the uh, what's the financial situation look like going into uh, the next fiscal year 13 14 but it's also an opportunity to um, reflect a little bit look back and and say two things um, number one did we do what we said we were going to do and if not um, where are we with respect to the things that the City Council um, uh, asked for and or approved. And secondly, um, what are some of the bigger picture, most significant things that really um, have a big deal impact on where we are and where we're going? Um, we've, we've selected a very, very small number of items that we think have a big picture impact um, looking forward as well as um, sort of the what did we do last year, how have we situated the city um, in a better spot than it was when we started the year. And these were some of the things that we came up with in terms of, um, uh, you know, how we've moved the ball forward. What are what are some of the significant accomplishments? Now, I call these to your attention only because they they, they fit on one slide and they're sort of um, bigger picture. But um, I'd like to call your attention to the the uh, departmental presentations in the budget as you have the opportunity over the next several days to go through the budget in a little bit more detail. I hope that you will spend a little bit of time and pause and look at each department's presentation, not only of its proposed goals and objectives for the coming year's work program, but also how we've presented this year the um, accomplishments for the about to be closed fiscal year, the current fiscal year. Um, in response to some comments that have been made in prior years by the City Council and frankly out of our own interest to make sure that we're being thoughtful and um, um, appropriate in, in, in understanding that when you say you're going to do something and that the work program is an important one that we're actually um, paying attention to how did, what, how did we do how, or at least um, and I don't mean uh, what was the, what was the result as much about did we move the ball forward in the areas that we spoke about um, so you'll see in this budget and I would uh, call out although there are many people who worked on this budget and I um, am uh, extremely appreciative to the, of the work of every single employee in this organization and especially the leadership of each of our departments and our finance director in putting together this budget We'll call to your attention the fact that um, Jennifer Dianos, for the first time, had a very significant role in shaping the appearance of this budget in that um, she led the effort to provide a status report that is incorporated uh, in each department uh, next to all of those accomplishments. So if we said we were going to do X, where are we with it? And um, a little statement of what we did it's not done, um, you know, where, where are we, and is this an item that is uh, part of our continuing work program, or is this something that we've essentially closed and, and completed accomplishment of? So I hope you'll take a little bit of time and um, uh, have a chance to look those over in, in more detail. Um, just from a bigger picture perspective, again, uh, some of the things that we think are uh, particularly meaningful in terms of uh, positioning of the city for the future. First and foremost, the adoption of the Transit Corridors Plan, which is a um, years-long initiative to develop that plan, to generate the community interest and enthusiasm, and we hope over the next uh, period of time, hopefully beginning uh, as early as the coming year, to 
really begin um, a number of strategic initiatives to put that plan fully into place and begin to see um, sprouts of real revitalization in our downtown and our transit corridors over the next several years. Um, we selected a developer for the community's long-held dream of a uh, high-quality uh, hotel at the crossing development site, one which uh, hopefully will address a long, unmet community need for high-quality meeting and gathering space that will allow us to uh, compare to uh, most of our colleagues to have a real place where you can actually have a, um, a party, a banquet, a seminar, um, something in addition to and other than our wonderful senior center which gets such, such heavy use that um, a community of our size uh, really deserves a, a, little bit, uh, a little bit more than that. Um, and then in the financial area, um, we just uh, call out again the um, very significant work uh, by Kim Duran, our finance director, in leading the uh, refinancing of the PERS side fund for public safety, which results over, a 30, over the next 30 years with, by refi refinancing the debt that has been on our books and has been being paid to PERS, um, we've achieved savings of just over $3 million for the taxpayers of San Bruno over the next, as I said, 30 years. So we're, we're, um, we're pleased about that. And then lastly, um, the City Council, as part of its ongoing um, interest and priority for assuring the long-term fiscal viability of this community, against any and all potential unexpected contingencies, some of which we've actually experienced, um, developed, you developed, uh, you tasked us with developing, and you approved a financial reserve policy that uh, has allowed us to more thoughtfully set aside resources as they become available into designated funds that will allow us to um, be confident that the rainy day resources or unforeseen contingency resources are available when they need to be. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Kim now um, and let her walk through the, the financials, um, starting with the, a big picture overview of, of the proposed budget and we're walking you through some of the details of the revenues and expenditures we anticipate. Great, thank you. So the 2013-14 proposed budget anticipates total operating revenues of 34.6 million and at this time the proposed operating expenditures of 34.3 million which leaves an operating surplus of just over $300,000. Uh, we'll get into uh, a little bit later on in the presentation. A, some, there's a summary at, uh, in the introduction of the budget of all the supplemental uh, proposed service level enhancements, which in uh, total $302,000. So when you factor in those proposed supplemental requests, we end up with a uh, change in fund balance of just over $1,900 next year. So first starting with the revenue side, um, Everything that you see here, the numbers before you, are positive. We are anticipating in 2013-14 that the uh, proposed budget will be 1.3, revenue budget will be $1.3 million higher than the current year amended budget as it currently stands. Now, as you look at those numbers up there, you'll see the middle, sort of in the middle column, the second column, uh, the estimated actual for the current year, uh, you'll see that numbers are trending higher than what the amended budget indicates at this point in time. And so the budget projection for next year is pretty much consistent with what we are anticipating uh, for the current year. Where we're seeing most of our increases, as I've said um, in the past during some of the quarterly financial updates, are within the taxes. And we are seeing jumps in sales tax and transient occupancy tax. And so 
we are seeing pretty significant increases in those uh, revenues. And I'd like to move to the next slide, which hopefully is um, not as quite as simple to see as I was hoping. But what this does is it provides some perspective uh, over the last seven years, from 2006, 2007 to current and to the proposed budget for next year of our major revenue categories. So taxes, and then we have franchise fees, uh, use of money and property, allocations and departmental revenues. Those are our five major general fund revenue categories and that top line are taxes. And you can see that in looking at this, that our taxes uh, going back around 07, 08, 08, 09 had reached a high of just over $20 million. And then when the recession really impacted the city during the 2008, 9, 9, 10 fiscal year, those revenues dropped off significantly. And they stayed low for the next uh, several years, and it wasn't until really within the last year that we've seen taxes as a whole basically catch up to where we were back in 07, 08, 08, 09, and now surpass that level. So the tax growth is positive, but it also it's good to kind of look at it from a historical perspective to see really where we ended up, uh, where we were just a few years ago. As you look down towards the bottom uh, of the graph, where the other revenue categories are, what you'll see is a somewhat different story than what you're seeing with taxes in that many of the other revenue categories remain fairly stagnant. Uh, we have seen you know, some upticks from year to year in certain categories, but for the most part, it, as you look from 2006, 2007 to next year, you see that those lines are pretty flat for the most part. And in some cases, we've seen decreases. Uh, again, the allocations and other revenue category included um, some recoveries that we formerly we used to receive from the former redevelopment agency, those are gone. Uh, we used to receive an interest payment from the redevelopment agency on those outstanding advances. That is no longer um, coming into the city. So while we're seeing these increases, you know, keep in mind that there are other categories where we are still, there's still some lows, low points. In addition, uh, in addition to those that I mentioned, interest earnings, as you know, remain at uh, historic lows. And so those are just some categories that we continue to uh, see very little growth in. Uh, one other thing I'd like to bring to your attention on the revenue side is the fact that the proposed 2013-14 budget does not include any what we would call one-time revenues. Uh, we have uh, in the past from time to time utilized some one-time revenues uh, to balance the budget. For 2013-14, uh, the use of one-time revenues, and when I say one-time revenues, usually those uh, are revenues that come from uh, major development projects, and some major development projects that we um, have taken into consideration for next year include uh, some of the home rebuilds at the, at, up at Crestmore, uh, the Skycrest, as well as the San Francisco Police Credit Union uh, project. So those are some somewhat significant one-time revenues that uh, may be anticipated for next year. However, those are not factored into the proposed budget at this time and will instead be brought forward um, as part of the Capital Improvement Program budget as a potential funding source for some maybe some of the one-time initiatives that will come forward with that budget. Moving on to the expenditure side. Uh, the total proposed 2013-14 budget is $34.3 million, as I mentioned earlier. This is a $900,000 increase over the current year amended budget, and that's about a 2.7% increase. Uh, that does not, $900,000 does not include the budget amendment that you might recall from mid-year this year. Uh, we amended the budget for about approximately a million dollars this year. Uh, to increase the budget as a result of the negotiated agreements, uh, the elimination of the furlough and some of the other concession, employee concessions, and some of the uh, salary and benefit increases that came as part of those agreements are already factored into the current year amended budget of $33.4 million. Moving on to the next slide, so that $900,000 increase, it's a significant increase, and what I, the next slide tries to do is really demonstrate some of the major drivers of that increase, and this isn't meant, this is just a summary of some of the uh, more significant items. This isn't meant to be everything, obviously, that's increased in the budget, but some of the more significant ones. Uh, one item is the cost for the November 2013 election of $54,000. We have some increase 
increases in county service charges or animal control cost contract increase as well as some additional uh, increases of just about $45,000. We have an increase in the fire overtime budget as well as the share, some of the costs related to the shared services agreement with fire for a total of $264,000 of uh, increases which are offset by uh, revenue coming into the city as a result of those agreements of $106,000. Uh, every year as part of the budget process, we have to take into account wage increases that employees receive as a result of just step increases. And those typically amount to anywhere in the one to $200,000 range. And so for next year, that amount is $200,000. We also have increases in purse costs of, uh, for our miscellaneous group of about $95,000. Uh, we had a program expansion, um, expansion of some classes and um, camps and so forth in the recreation department that uh, results in an increase in part-time salaries as well as contract uh, contractor fees of about $162,000, which are offset by revenues of about $200,000. And the final item is a uh, increase in the city's liability premium. Uh, we, I've mentioned before that the city's liability premium over the last two years has increased at a rate of 30% per year and it is anticipated to increase another 30% next year. Uh, this increase is significant and it's, it is paid for the, that the liability premium is paid for through an allocation to all departments depending on, you know, the responsibility for that premium and so the general funds uh, portion of that increase is $70,000 for next year. So in total, that gets you just below that $900,000 increase figure. And then if you offset it with $306,000 of revenues, you end up with just over 500, just about $584,000 of increase um, in the budget. This next slide is really just meant to sort of be thought provoking and informational in that uh, one of the things that I was looking at as we were looking at the increase in the budget and trying to reconcile the $900,000 increase and better understand that is really looking at, you know, again, going back historically, looking at where we were back in 2006, 2007. And as part of any financial forecast, you typically would take a base budget and apply some sort of inflation factor. Uh, many of the forecasts that I've seen use an inflation factor of 3 to 4% annually. And so what we did was just took a conservative approach and said, what if we took the budget in 06 or 07 and had just increased it at a rate of 2% per year, where would we be for next year? And as you can see, that number is just, just under $36 million for the proposed 2013-14 budget using that 2% uh, escalation. Can, can I interrupt you for a second, Kim? Um, I saw an earlier version and I think at 3% or 2.5%, yeah. yeah. Those two, uh, 2007, 8, 8, 9 bars, the, 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 the diagonal line actually is much closer to the top of those. So mm -hmm. the chart is just a little bit misleading in, in, in making it look like 07, 08, 08, 09, you know, we were way, uh, I guess you could, uh, one interpretation could be way overspending. Remember, that's only a 2% annual escalation. Just using 3%? Or two and a half percent. That was two and a half. Percent. Two and a half percent puts that diagonal line much closer to the top of those bars. So it really is not, uh, you know, there's not a drum. Uh, this is just a, for purposes of illustration of the point that Kim was making that even a two percent escalation in costs um, is really we're, it, we've been very very conservative in our annual budget. Uh, budget uh, total amounts over the last many years. And I think what makes the prior, the previous slide um, even more interesting is when you look at the purse rates, which are on this next uh, chart, and because a major driver of our budget increases over the last seven, eight years have been increases in purse rates. And as you can see, um, the white line representing, the bottom line representing the miscellaneous employees and the top line representing the safety employees. And you can see that, you know, over the course of the last six, seven years, some fairly significant increases in both miscellaneous and safety rates. Uh, 
the drop off that you see in the, basically the current year is the result of a reduction in the rate resulting from the issuance of the pension obligation bonds. Uh, and it is misleading to the extent that we are now paying a debt service payment that is equivalent to the amount that we would essentially have been paying if we are paying the full rate. So over time, we are saving money. However, it's misleading to look at the, that dra dramatic of a drop off because it is not in fact, um, the city is not saving that much money as a result of those uh, increases, uh, those bonds. But with this, oh, since 2006, 2007, back in 06 and 07, the city was paying just about $3.2 million in pension costs and the budget for next year is about $5 million when you include those pension obligation bonds. So over the last six years, the general fund's contribution to pension costs has been $1.8 million. So when you think, you hear that number and you look back to the previous slide at some of the budget increases and decreases but where we ended up, I think it's pretty tremendous. It's a, um, a tremendous accomplishment that the budget has been able to have been uh, contained in the manner which it has been um, as a result of those increases. Uh, in addition to PERS increases, there's also health care costs. We've increased those over the last seven, eight, six, seven years by about a million dollars as well. So some very significant increases that have been absorbed through these budgets over the years. And I just want to bring to your attention before we move on from this slide to the, uh, the future projected PERS rates and that continuing increase that you see up there. Uh, you might have heard recently within the last three to six months, PERS has talked a lot about changing the way they uh, amortize their rates, their amortization schedule, because essentially they realized that they weren't collecting enough money to pay for their liability. And so when they changed their assumptions, that results in higher rates for all of us to pay, all the cities to pay. And so based on the information that PERS has provided to us, we anticipate that these increases that are up here um, are accurate based on what we know at this point in time. And by 2020, based on the information that we have, miscellaneous PERS rates will be just below 30%. So very significant increases still to come. However, you know, they are on par with what we've seen in the past. And so I think what we've seen is um, an ability to continue to budget in a way that contains those costs as much as possible. That concludes my portion of the finances, and I'll hand it back over to the city manager to discuss the proposed service level enhancements. Great. Uh, thank you, Kim. On page A1, um, under the first tab in your budget, um, there is a summary just following the city manager's uh, introductory letter to the budget that uh, outlines all of the several proposed service level enhancements uh, that are, are uh, brought forward for your consideration. Um, we will be discussing each of these in a little bit more detail during the departmental presentations, but we wanted to call your attention to the fact that um, it, it, these proposals are being made. Um, and, and again, this is very typical of what we have been doing in the last several years is to continually look at our organization um, budget from a base level uh, that does not assume any significant changes or increases, but continues all existing programs and services and, 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 and does its very best to incorporate and in, and even um, just simply absorb cost increases within uh, within the um, same general <coughs> cost parameters. Um, the proposed service level enhancements then again are called out for your special decision making and have not yet been included in the numbers that you see in each of the departments. So again, we will be asking for you to make specific decisions about these uh, when we bring the budget back at the end of this month for your consideration to adopt. I just want to point out uh, a couple of things. I mentioned earlier the concept of a resource to provide an economic development plan and initiatives for the downtown. Um, and where is this coming from and why? As the council knows, um, in January of 2012, the city and others in the state of California experienced a pretty significant loss of the tools that redevelopment provide, provided for economic revitalization and elimination of blight. Um, this city 
had just uh, begun and was just on the cusp of taking real advantage of redevelopment as a tool and a resource. And we've just begun to develop a significant um, redevelopment uh, tax increment flow. Um, what some of our colleagues are doing, and uh, similarly, we're proposing that you consider that we use some of the um, t property tax increase that the city will experience this year as a result of the loss of redevelopment that as one of the taxing entities uh, in this jurisdiction, the city of San Bruno itself is um, going to experience a limited increase in its property tax receipts. Um, we are proposing that you consider set aside, uh, in this case of $125,000, for specific dedication to initiatives and um, strategic planning for the downtown. Now obviously our transit corridors plan addresses the downtown. It does so in a larger scale, kind of longer term, bigger picture, development standards type of way. This resource would be intended for um, nearer term initiatives and um, the opportunity to um, uh, try and, try and uh, uh, jumpstart uh, revitalization of the downtown in, in uh, hopefully in a number of different ways. Um, we this service level enhancements uh, proposed here in the total cost of three hundred and two thousand dollars also includes some some fairly limited um, reorganizations or changes in the way that um, different departments are staffed. Um, you'll notice uh, in the chart that you have before you in the budget that where we kind of rejuggled uh, the, the staff resources and allocations, we've also shown where uh, reductions or where um, uh, cost savings would occur. So the $302,000 is a net total cost of the um, supplemental program. Um, we are proposing some limited new staff or uh, uh, restored staff um, in areas where we think it is particularly critical, and I'll call those out right now. Um, first, using resources that are available to the city for uh, all of the various uh, issues and work efforts associated with the rebuilding, restoration, and recovery of the community related to the um, fire incident in 2010. That trust fund uh, is being requested to fund a management analyst position that would be utilized primarily um, through the city manager's office and in coordination uh, with um, other key department heads in the administrative section of the organization to address primarily public information and outreach needs, um, but to support overall um, the continuous, continuing tremendously impactful work effort associated with supporting our residents and uh, managing the many initiatives that are uh, uh, we have taken on and uh, responsibilities that we've been that have we've been required to take on uh, as a result of that incident. Um, in the police department, we are proposing, and this is um, probably by no means the only area of the organization where a prior cut has had a particular impact, but it's one that I think um, in our review of, of the budget initiatives uh, really has a cross uh, organization and a community-wide real need that made it rise to, to the top in terms of, of what we felt we needed to recommend to you. And that is restoration of one police officer position that uh, was previously filled by a Police corporal, um, whose whose job responsibilities were uh, uniquely devoted to um, community service um, initiatives and support to again across the organization to things like code enforcement, um, downtown issues, and others that uh, were creating community concerns. 
the city council, uh, just as one example, the city council is um, uh, acutely aware of a recent issue in our downtown that caused a number of complaints from merchants and residents alike where, um, uh, in this case, suspected uh, potentially illegal activity was occurring in, in one of our downtown businesses, but more particularly that there was uh, numbers of um, uh, incidents occurring outside of the, outside of the business and, 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 as I said, creating uh, cause for concern among uh, patrons to the downtown as well as to downtown merchants. Um, the, our ability to address those, and we, we have successfully, uh, fortunately, addressed that particular issue, but it's, it is by no means an isolated incident. Um, our ability to address those kinds of critical situations while we are continuing to deal with uh, the broad range of issues and events that are occurring, occurring within the community, um, it, 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 makes, it, it provides a more spotty type of enforcement and sometimes can lead to um, dissatisfaction or a delayed response to items that, that really do deserve more attention. Um, the City Council is also aware that we've had a number of particularly critical code enforcement issues that require, a, a, again, a cross-departmental, entire organization type of response and which then have impacts that continue after the immediate intervention and or need our attention in some other manner. Again, the support services or community services corporal was a position that allowed us to jump on those things a little bit more vigorously and timely. Um, we're recommending to you tonight that, um, and you'll hear more about this when the chief presents the department's, the police department's uh, budget next week, um, we're, we're recommending that to your consideration as well. Um, the, uh, in the planning area, um, in the community development department, there are a couple of initiatives that uh, we felt needed your attention. Um, they're both, um, one of them is the need to complete our zoning ordinance and uh, to move forward with the funding, the opportunity to complete that with environmental review that is required. Um, I recently learned that the funds that we had appropriated and had planned for the use of the, to develop the zoning ordinance update uh, to bring the zoning ordinance in conformance with our new general plan um, that that budget allocation had not uh, properly anticipated the need to do environmental review. The, uh, in the housing area, and unfortunately this is an, this is a, an item that uh, might have previously been funded by redevelopment, um, their new court decisions have created a need if this community, as I believe it is the city council's interest, continues to, wishes to continue enforcing its ordinance that requires a pretty significant um, set aside of uh, any multifamily projects for affordable multifamily uh, housing projects to be developed for um, occupancy by uh, low income households. Our ability to continue doing that um, will require a study that um, allows us to demonstrate the need and to become in compliance with new state law that is um, kind of a push-pull situation. On the one hand, um, there's state law that makes it more difficult to require affordable housing production. On the other hand, as you know, you're tasked with developing affordable housing with or without redevelopment. So um, uh, we think that's an area that needs a little bit more attention. Um, I'll let you uh, review the other items in here in detail. I think those are really the high points. Um, and as, as I indicated, each of the departments is tasked with giving you a, a brief overview during their departmental presentations about each of these supplemental or service enhancement requests. Um, all told, um, these o only uh, amount to a total of $200,000, just over $200,000 in ongoing costs and uh, just under $100,000 of one-time costs. 
Um, next, I uh, just wanted to remind the City Council, I mentioned this earlier, that your previous policy position having to do with the development of reserve funds is continuing to be maintained and as we in, uh, work, move forward in closing out this fiscal year, uh, once the fourth quarter of the fiscal year is actually completed and the books are finally closed, we'll be in a position to revisit that reserve policy with you and to consider um, whether there is uh, an opportunity to move further forward with your reserve policy interests and or to um, move any of the existing reserves further towards their uh, maximum uh, funding objectives. In terms of the um, bigger picture sort of uh, considerations that shaped this budget, um, and that we would like to call to your attention in terms of uh, the, you know, where we're going to be over the next year or things that we need to keep our eyes on. The City Council, uh, I'm sure, is aware that the agreements that we negotiated with each of our six bargaining units over the past year uh, eliminated furlough, as Kim mentioned, as of July 1st of uh, this year of 2013, I'm sorry, of 2012, um, and that those changes to salary and benefits that were removed concessions made in prior years are fully incorporated into the budget. What is not yet incorporated into the budget is the fact that those agreements also include a reopener to occur in October of the coming, uh, this coming fall in October with any changes that might be negotiated through the salary and health care reopener to take, a, to, to take effect um, not later than uh, January 1st of 2014. What that means is that for six months of the coming fiscal year, it is possible, although not yet determined, it is possible that the reopener could result in some new costs. Those costs are not yet anticipated and they have not yet been included in this budget. Um, so as we move forward into October and uh, begin to get our arms around what, what those costs might look like, obviously, um, there will be substantial further discussion with the City Council both about what those uh, topic areas of discussion are, what the potential costs of those might be, and uh, what we can recommend to you as a funding plan to cover those costs, if any. Um, during the coming year, um, we will continue, as we have over the past couple of years, to carefully monitor and account for costs associated with the broad range of activities that the city is continuing to devote to full restoration and recovery following the uh, 2010 disaster in the Crestmore neighborhood. As the council obviously is aware, a $50 million trust fund has been established and uh, we are periodically assembling the costs that we're incurring and seeking reimbursement from that trust fund. Um, over the course of the, of the last couple of years, there's been a pretty substantial um, utilization of existing staff, budgeted staff time for people like myself, finance director, and many of the uh, people in the audience and elsewhere within the organization. On a regular daily basis, there are a numbers of different types of activities that we are tasked with performing that re relate directly to and would not otherwise be required except for the fact that a um, tragic uh, disaster occurred in this town in September of 2010. Our costs are budgeted and they're fully covered um, either through our enterprise or our operating budget allocations. So the recovery of those amounts um, represents a, an, an amount of money that then um, comes back to the city 
for redeposit either um, in the enterprises or in the um, in the general fund. But it does give you an opportunity to consider a resource that um, may be available to be deployed, for example, and it may be our recommendation to you that you want to consider um, using some of those funds to cover the um, costs of, if any, of, a, of the reopener that will occur in October. Um, I mention this only because the, I, number one, I want to make sure that the council and the community are aware that those substantial efforts that are continuing to be expended are actually being paid with a dedicated resource. And secondly, that it gives us the opportunity um, not only to recover the costs, but to determine how those funds uh, need to be deployed. I mentioned the um, uh, significance of the loss of redevelopment previously. I'll just uh, mention this bullet point on the slide I failed to mention earlier when I was talking about the economic development and, uh, initiative that we're proposing for the downtown as part of our service enhancement recommendations to you, that um, the, these amounts that the city receives uh, in additional property tax are uh, referred to as redevelopment boomerang funds. I mean, they kind of, they would have bounced to redevelopment, but in fact, they're bouncing back to the taxing entities. I guess that's how we came up with boomerang. Um, for the city of San Bruno, that amount is approximately $750,000 in the 13-14 fiscal year. Um, again, we're recommending $125,000 be carved out for the downtown initiative. Um, the remainder of those funds are uh, incorporated in the revenue projection that is that is being used uh, to um, uh, fund general fund expenditures. So the property taxes, part of the property tax increase results from based on um, crisis, um, but given our stabilizing financial situation. It's an opportunity for us to more thoughtfully and strategically look forward and to develop a multi-year financial plan that gives you a little bit of a, um, a, an opportunity to, to think a, ahead about where we're going and how financially and operationally we propose to get there. Um, concurrent with that, and, and again going back to an early, some early comments I made uh, in the, um, at the start of this meeting regarding the Council's discussion of numbers of interests at our previous workshop in March, uh, the Council had specifically asked for the establishment of a strategic planning session and we look forward to working together with you in conjunction with putting together this financial forecast, financial plan to think about um, some of the uh, uh, strategic initiatives and planning uh, from a, not just from a financial perspective, but from an operational perspective. Again, where do you want to go and how are we going to get there? So we um, look forward within the next several months to scheduling that with the City Council and having a more broad-based uh, discussion that then will give us a jump start on uh, the development of the following year's budget and work program. So with that, we're going to move away uh, now, unless the City Council would like to engage a little discussion from the operating budget and move to a brief overview discussion of the enterprise's uh, financial issues. And then um, that will conclude our discussion tonight, or our presentation tonight. And we'll look forward to um, getting back with a little bit more detail next week. So I'm happy to take any questions if you have any right now on the operating budget or we'll move over to the uh, enterprises. So moving on to the enterprise funds, um, I'm just going to very quickly walk through uh, the figures that are up on the screen uh, with the water fund. And I guess one note before we jump into this on the enterprise funds, this is presenting obviously the operating side of the budget and uh, as you're well aware that with the enterprise funds, particularly with water and wastewater, a significant part of the revenue uh, generation is geared towards the capital program. And so what you see when you look at both the water and wastewater fund are some sizable surpluses um, after you take the 
take out the operating costs and that is as intended um, to cover the cost of the capital improvement program. So uh, the financial picture for the enterprises becomes more clear as the uh, when the capital improvement budget is presented. So uh, for the operations and water overall revenues uh, are expected to increase in accordance with the uh, rate program adopted last year of just about a million dollars higher next year than in the current year budget uh, up to 12.2 million dollars. Whereas on the expenditure side for operating expenditures, we are uh, anticipating that expenditures are going to be fairly flat uh, with only a $22,000 increase in the water fund. And part of that is driven by a decrease in the um, rates, SFPUC rates for next year below what we anticipated. However, we are anticipating to offset that decrease and increase in the amount purchased as we um, continue to have a well down. So there's been an offset there, but overall a stable budget for water. On the wastewater side, uh, similarly with uh, the revenues, uh, the rate increase program adopted last year anticipates a 10.3% rate increase and uh, that resulted in a $1.2 million increase in revenues. And on the expenditure side, um, a fairly stable budget but some increase of just over $200,000 on the revenue side. And again, the residual difference of $5 million will be geared towards um, the capital improvement program. The remaining two enterprise funds, stormwater, uh, pretty uh, much status quo budget. The uh, revenue side, some amount of increase that we've seen um, over the last uh, year. So the budget will increase 32,000 there on the revenue side and an uptake on the expenditures of 61,000. But still, um, the fund continues to operate at an operating surplus. And finally, with cable, the revenue picture anticipates a $562,000 increase in cable revenues. That amount does anticipate a increase in cable rates uh, in the fall. So there's a, about a 5% increase, 5% rate increase anticipated uh, in the fall that is uh, driving that rate increase, uh, the revenue increase. And on the expenditure side, um, an increase of $329,000, which is primarily driven by increase in uh, cost for uh, programming fees and so forth. The bottom line of $694,000 in the cable fund does not include the debt service payment that cable continues to pay for the uh, commercial services uh, program that was initiated back in 2009-10, uh, but uh, which is about $400,000, which actually leads to the next, the final two slides, uh, which just summarizes our debt service obligations uh, for 2013-14. So in the general fund, we have two debt obligations. One is for the uh, debt, the uh, loan we received to purchase the fire apparatus back in 2011. That's just a that's a $38,000 payment. We also have the payment for the pension obligation bonds of $1.17 million. And again, uh, when even though we see a decrease in some of the, we'll see decreases in purse costs in both police and fire, which is. Uh, while it's a decrease there, it's being offset by this debt service payment. So um, it is misleading if you just look at it from the department perspective. Uh, we continue to pay the certificates of participation uh, for the construction of the police facility, and that is paid through the funds that we receive from the dissolution of redevelopment. In the wastewater fund, we have uh, the 2002 certificates of participation of $623,000, as well as uh, three different loans that we pay to City of South San Francisco um, state revolving fund loans uh, for improvements to the jointly owned wastewater treatment plant. Those amount to about $1.2 million. And finally, in cable, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the debt service payment for the acquisition of the equipment for the commercial services program of $445,000. And of note, 2013-14 is the final year that that payment, uh, the full amount of that payment is required. There'll be a few months uh, in the coming, the 14-15 year, but it is winding down. So that's just about complete. So that concludes this evening's presentation. Happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions? Discussion? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's say something. Come on. I just like to say that it's like you said it's been a long time mm -hmm. to see something positive and we you know it didn't sneak up on us but uh, 
I think we've been so preoccupied in trying to recover, not only financially, but also tragically. And uh, I think it's now it's sort of good to be able to concentrate on moving forward and getting some other things that sort of been on hold. And I'm, I'm very, very encouraged and uh, appreciate, you know, that ongoing for the last 10 years, for as long as the city manager's tenure, actually, that, uh, you know, that we've had to really tighten the belt. And, and it's to the audience as to how, how we've made that work. And I think it's important to know that we look, we, at least I do, I watch what other cities do. And we sort of lead the, lead the pack in planning for increase, not just increases, but improvements, you know, and whether it's a water, wastewater increase or whether it's a capital improvement uh, <coughs> projects and things. I can appreciate what we do and then we see how the other cities sort of fall into it or the c other cities have more problems with it and uh, they're probably not going to come out of this uh, out of this recovery as as good as we are and I, I, I and I'm proud to say that we you know we're not making up for lost time we are well positioned and we're just going to start right into it seems that we're going to start right into some you know some real positive uh, positive action in the next couple of years. If I could just comment on that real quickly, um, I, I I think your observations are exactly on target and well, thank you. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, like uh, <laughs> some of the, um, the it, sometimes it's difficult to make comparisons to other cities and I know that sometimes you uh, among your elected official colleagues may be hearing that, you know, oh, we're having to do this or that, and you may wonder, well, it, you know, are we doing enough? Have we done enough? Um, and I've looked at that from time to time and paid close attention to what I hear my colleagues talking about because we, we discuss these types of things often as well. And uh, one, of the, one of the things that I've observed is that the city has been at this, as we've said, for a very long time, um, for a decade and or, or actually a little bit more than a decade and we have i think we started promptly but we continued to maintain reductions we continue to make reductions and or to hold the line in a very aggressive way um, and sometimes at a level that um, was it was a little bit tighter than than some of our colleagues, um, and I'm not. You know, everybody does it differently, and everybody's situation is a little bit different. Um, but I do think that the strategy that the city council has imposed and developed and, and maintained and guided um, for this very long time um, both demonstrates your thoughtful uh, analysis as, as longtime policymakers with the best interests of the city of San Bruno in foremost of your minds. Um, but also a strategy that um, has actually served this community very well. Um, and, and I think the good results that we have in front of us are not only related to the sun rays of uh, um, economic improvement, but also to the strategy that you've guided these many years. So. We hope, we can't say for sure, but we hope, because we can't, none of us can predict the future that reliably. But we do see some opportunity for optimism, and um, I failed to mention earlier, and we just call your attention to the front cover of this budget, as we enter our centennial year, um, you know, we've got something really uh, very profound to uh, be proud about, to brag about, and hopefully, as we move forward over the next year to celebrate. Anyone else? Well, this is a, a nice review. It kind of sets the stage for what we're going to get into next week in the, in the details. And so I appreciate this because I, I don't get into the details as much as a lot of my colleagues do, but uh, which is just fine. Everybody does their thing a little different. But I, I do want to say it's an opportunity in the overview to thank uh, 
all the department heads, all city staff, and all uh, city employees. Uh, top to bottom, I like to use top to bottom, I like to say laterals, if you will, because we're all in it together. We've, uh, we've had to, um, to really um, you know, think about what we're doing with, with the money we have. Uh, nobody's really been let go. We've been able to do that uh, a lot differently than other cities in the last number of years. Uh, but even with my own business, I'm still keeping my powder dry. So I, I think, um, you know, we are a conservative council, fairly conservative. I think we want to be that way going forward. But keep in mind, and some of the older employees will re remember that when we, when we had it, we always shared it. And we intend to do that going forward, at least I intend to. So um, it gives us the opportunity this evening in the overview of what is a very special budget uh, when we're coming out of some very tough times to say thank you and we appreciate it and it does not go unnoticed. So thank you very much. So if there's no other business, we're adjourned Monday night.